welcome to the Chris Brakes Show. And before we get started, as always, I want to remind you motherfuckers that Saturday night is always the punk rock night at the Melody Inn in Indianapolis. And I'd also like to thank you for going to our website, chrisbrickshow.com, and clicking the Amazon link and shopping through, because that really helps support this show. And we appreciate it. Every dime counts. John? It is a beautiful night in Indianapolis tonight. I'm Chris Brake. I'm sitting here with my good friend, John Rapp. And we are joined by... What, what should I call her? <laughs> well, John, what should I call her? Selective Sarah. Selective Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> How are you doing today, Sarah? I am wonderful. How are you guys? Good. It's a big deal. Sarah hadn't been on the show for quite a while. Quite a while. I've missed it. Sarah, why'd you leave the show? Because I had a lot of crap going on. Oh, okay. Yeah, there was a lot of stuff going on. I had school and work and other drama things, so yeah. Oh, well, we're glad that you're back. I did not mean to turn that music down that rapidly. There we go. I like that. Sorry, I'm playing with the knobs here. I just want to say, um, what, on, we're listening to this song on Spotify. And uh, one of the songs that it says that this is like is a song called Poo Poo in the Prawn. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Some weird crap. So our song, Brain Like Literally, This, right? is poop, <laughs> it's similar to Poo Poo in the, pr- in the Prawn? <laughs> yes. Who sings Poo Poo in the Prawn? Ian Dury. You guys need to get him. <laughs> I, I think we must uh, listen to it. You want to hear it? I do. Poo poo in the prawn. Yeah, poo poo in the prawn, like poo poo in the shrimp. Yeah, I guess. (laughs) Yeah, like like the mud vein. (laughs) The mud vein. No, I'm not talking about them. I didn't even make the the. I didn't even notice that mud vein was probably referring to the The mud vein. Yeah, the poo poo vein. No, do we have a mud vein? Is that our? uh, No, that's our butt. No, what it's our our, it's our our, intestinal uh, intestine. Yes. What is the mud vein? It's something on a shrimp? Yeah, it's like the back of the shrimp. It's this black line. It, it's where all their poo is. So you have to take that off before you eat shrimp. Oh. Um, yeah. Yeah, although I've, I've seen a lack of the mud vein in the shrimp recently. Well, yeah, because people know what it is. They're like, oh, there's poo in that. I don't want to eat that well, shrimp. N- now they do? Because I, I remember it used to always be there. Well... You think People they would found take, out about it. You think they take it out? You know, it's a courtesy. I mean, it's nutrients. Why not? Yeah, who's gonna eat the mud vein? That's it's. Gross. I mean, it's shrimp poo. <laughs> How bad could it be? <laughs> How good could it be? Is the question. <laughs> you said it was always there. Yeah, and I always picked it out. I didn't even know what it was. It just looked like little black things. Whatever. All right, before we get started here, we're going to listen to, what, what is that? Ian Dury, poo poo yeah, in yeah. the prom. I just want to hear a second of it to see if it's as bad as our song. Uh-oh. This is Poo Poo in the Prom? Yeah, I expected so. Oh. oh. All right. This is my cue. We also got Bloodhound Gang. Wow. Well, let's not play that. <laughs> they get enough recognition already, but Ian Ian Drury Drury uh, doesn't get enough. He doesn't get enough. So go check him out. The poo poo and the the <laughs> prawn. And the prawn. Um, a lot of people. We're gonna talk about this later, but I do want to bring it up uh, just so you know we're gonna talk about it. A lot of people have been asking us about our recent Indiana talks. Situation. We were on a local radio internet station called Indiana Talks, and we uh, we went to the Marion County Fair and did a live show with them and the uh, the I guess the producer. I don't know what his title is. He's got he's on the website. He's got some big name, but anyway, we call him Knucklehead Nick. And um, we recently got fired from Indiana Talks, 
And a lot of people have been asking what the story is. So we will we will let everybody know exactly what that is. But first, I want to spend some time with Smirky Sarah here <laughs> oh my God. and find out what the hell's going on. Oh, what? Yeah, you said you had a... Uh... Okay, okay. So, yeah, I do have something. You got something? I do. What so, do I have an ex that you both are well acquainted with. And an ex-boyfriend. Yes. And he has recently asked me to coffee to see how I am and what I'm up to. Well, at least he's in a position to where he can actually go out and get coffee. I thought that maybe we were, this was going to be a different conversation. But so an ex <laughs> wants to go out and get coffee. Yeah, and I'm like, uh, I, to see how I am. And he, I just, I don't, I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I want to. I don't know if I just go for, like, curiosity. Like, what do you guys think? I, I probably wouldn't do it. That's weird. <laughs> but wait, it's an ex that we all know. Yeah. Like John knows. Yeah. And I know. Yeah. I think I figured out who it is. Um, I would I would say that you know he he probably isn't up to much, you know he's probably in the exact same situation he was in when you knew him. Right. And uh, he's probably doing the exact same thing, and there's probably nothing going on. Well, that's what I'm like. Why why like out of the blue? Like yeah. this is like what the heck? I can tell you if I asked my ex to coffee. It would, <laughs> It's not for coffee, you know, it's, it's because not. it's like I want a doorway back into your yeah, life. Yeah, you know? that's what I'm thinking, and I'm like, I don't, I just, I didn't want to at, really at all, and I just, uh, yeah, I didn't respond. But, okay. The, you I, didn't respond? Uh, no. That's the worst. It's been like a day. It's been like a day. <laughs> I, you know, yeah, I don't think I've ever been in a situation where I've wanted to ask an ex out for coffee. Any of the exes that I do have, um, I'm pretty good terms with. Right. You know, and I actually did, I do see them from time to time. Right. And there was no reason to where it would be awkward to ask them out for coffee. Uh, you know? Yeah, I know. So if it's a situation where it's awkward. Coffee is, a, it's like a code word. That doesn't yeah. mean coffee. Coffee is for closers. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to close a deal. I feel like it's like a high fidelity thing or something. Yeah. He's trying to like get back with the exes and say, oh, blah, blah. I don't even really remember. Well, he what was, I'm you know what? <laughs> or maybe with high fidelity, he wanted to know what he did wrong right. and why oh. he wasn't the one chosen. Oh, I thought he was going back and being like, sorry, but look, I'm great now. I don't know. I didn't really like it, the movie. I didn't really pay attention. Oh, well, that's what it was all like. Basically, well, I can't even remember the plot. I loved it. I've seen it a million times, but I can't. I can't. Yeah, there wasn't much of a plot, was there? He just called up all his girlfriends or something. But yeah, I think the he was calling them up to see like what went wrong with me and you. I thought he was all like, oh, look at me. I'm so great now. No, he was. Just, he went through his top five all-time breakups who hurt him the oh. most, and he was calling to feel better about himself. Like oh. the, fir the first person he calls who left him for his, you know, like his school friend. Yeah. Uh, she ended up marrying that guy. Oh, okay. So then he felt perfectly okay because she was meant to marry him, you know? Yeah. I mean, so I then he felt, he felt better about himself. What would I talk about? I, I just... It, but I'm telling you, right now, this guy's probably still a loser. <laughs> okay. I mean, I didn't... I, there was, like, in my head, I was like, I don't really want to do this, but I wanted to throw it out there and see what everybody thought. If, if it's the guy I th uh, that I was thinking about, I think that I thought he had a girlfriend. Yeah, I have, he probably always has a girlfriend or tries to have one. On jumps rotation. around <laughs> on rotation. Whoever will let him stay at his house, whatever, whatever he, whoever he can get the most out of, uh -huh. physically and emotionally, whoever he can just drain. So does he not listen to the show? I don't Let's know. not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, we. Do, I did a whole fucking episode yeah. on him. Really? Are you serious? Yeah, That's I did. Awesome. I did an entire. This fucking asshole wanted me to bail him out of jail. <laughs> wow. I did an entire episode. I had to go bail him out of jail, and and he said that he had money and he'd pay right away. And then when we pick him up, then it's like he doesn't have money. And it's like, oh, you son of a bitch. And then he's not even grateful. He's not even thankful. You know. It was just what? the worst. It was the worst experience ever, and it caused me to say "fuck you" and wow. not deal with the guy anymore. Wow! I want to listen to that episode. <laughs> I believe it's called "Bailing a Friend Out of Jail." Okay. So that was what that was the advice. Yeah, that, I mean, yeah, I just needed advice. I mean, opinions. That's really. What all. do you, th you think you're going to take him up on it? No. No. Well, no. Don't do it because we said that. Because what do we know? No, because that's <laughs> my whole. When I read that, I was like, "What?" I was like, "Why?" What did you see? Some movie that? <laughs> like what happened? Like I don't talk to you. What would you get out of it? Nothing. Because that's what it comes down to. Because he wants something out of it. No, He's getting something out of it. I don't want anything. What do you think he wants out of it? I don't know to reconnect. I don't know. Like what? 
I don't want to do that. Or to say he's sorry, I don't know, to show that he's such a good person now or something. I don't know. I'll tell you right now, he's not. <laughs> okay. It's, it's insane. Like, it's, it's insane. Like, he's... He's the exact same. Are you serious? Yeah, he's the exact same. Like, because long time ago, <coughs> when he was like, oh, blah, blah blah, he was saying all his sorries and everything in these long, drawn out m- Facebook messages that I wasn't responding to. He said he's so different now, and he's doing this, <laughs> and I'm in school. And check it out. He still has a low IQ. Okay, that hasn't changed. Uh, he's still completely unaware of other people. Mm-hmm. He's still one of the most selfish people I've ever met in my life. Right. None of that's changed. Irresponsible. Irre- he's, yeah, he's, he's Can't still... Can't do anything on his own, he's, independent, He's no. still basically not holding a job, still basically living out of his car and squatting at people's houses. Like, it's it's the most insane thing I've ever seen. Most people, when they get sober, their life straightens out. Right. He is in the exact same situation. But he's sober, maybe. Yeah, he's sober. Oh. At least he's got that going for him, but... Yeah. That's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. It was real bad. I just wanted to slap the shit out of him when I was hanging out with him. It's like, dude, I'm seeing through everything you're saying right now. Right. Yeah, and he and he, he accused me of being passive aggressive because yeah because like he's not. <laughs> well, no, he like then I I started yelling at him. And I'm like, is this? I'm I'm confronting you right now, saying this is this your definition of passive aggressive? Right. Like I'm about to slap the fucking shit out of you right now. Is that passive aggressive? Like right. it's, you're not going to be dealing with the passive aggressive motherfucker, man. If you keep talking like this, like it's, I'm not passive. Like you're an idiot. I'm not passive aggressive. And speaking of idiots, I think it's time we move on to uh, the Indiana talk situation. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't. I don't. How do I phrase this? This, this is a big. This is a big. Com- big chunk to bite off here. It's. It's a long, drawn out story. So, Sarah, please ask as many questions as possible, sure. so we actually can rom- remain coherent. Because I don't know any of it. I don't know the story. Right. Nothing. Well, I, we got fired from Indiana Talks, and I don't know. Like, there's a guy who runs Indiana Talks named Gary. I don't know that guy. He might be a very nice guy. Like, this doesn't really reflect on him because he wasn't really involved in this situation. So he might be he might be perfectly fine. Although how his how his uh, internet radio station is being ran, that might reflect on him. But <laughs> he n- don't have a beef with the guy at all. He's probably a nice guy. But you know, if you're hiring morons, so how do we? How, I don't know. How do we? <laughs> how, Start from the beginning. I mean, the beginning. Okay, here's what happened. <laughs> here's what happened. Almost a half a year ago. Yeah, wow. back in the winter time. Holy, back I was <laughs> here. No, it was just after you had left. Oh, okay. I mean, like, yeah, probably a week after you left. Wow, dang, I miss um, everything. <laughs> although it was hard, Sarah, to pinpoint when you exactly did leave. Yeah, because it was kind of a drawn out process. It was. <laughs> okay, so John like, Rap. Like what? <laughs> no, what? You like a drawn out process? Yeah. <laughs> oh. So John Rap gets uh, an email. Or a message, the Chris Break Show podcast Facebook page, go like it. Uh, gets a an email. <laughs> I'm, I'm sounding like an old man. The show didn't. You understand what I'm saying? The Facebook page didn't get an email, but we got some sort of digital message on the Facebook that I believe is called. It's called a message. Yeah, electronic. just a message. <laughs> yeah, we got an electronic message on the f- Facebook page, and it's from a guy uh, that we call Knucklehead Nick, and he said, "Hey, would you guys like a radio, an FM radio gig?" He said, I'm a producer at 91.9 WITT, and I'm looking for new talent, something like that, right? Am I right, John? Yeah, like, yeah. Okay, I kind of vaguely remember this, actually. Yeah, we were really excited. Okay. Yeah, and uh, like, man, I'm this I feel like maybe we should start at the end of the story. Because I don't know, I feel maybe we should jump around because that's that's kind of boring. But Do the, whatever. <laughs> just I mean, let but it the, flow. the guy was talking money. He was saying, you know, we'll pay you a little bit. You know, we'll get you on the air. We'll do sponsors. He said, "I'm the new producer at WITT, and I want to go in there and I want to shake things up. Right. And it's being run by an old man, and and we're gonna go in there and bring in the youth." And he, he just, I mean, he was talking real fucking big, right? And it's just like, okay, man, cool. But we're gonna do this show how we always do it. We're gonna do what we want to do. Because that's what we do. You know, I was like, if you, we don't know you and we don't trust your input, we don't know anything about this guy. All we know is he says he's going to get us a show and that it's pretty much a done deal. And all we have to do is he want, he suggested we record a pilot, which we could do in our home studio. But then he convinced us to go do it because the whole end goal was to do a live show on WITT. Okay. But we needed to do a live demo first where we just recorded an hour straight through of doing this show. 
Okay. You're laughing, John. It's just, man, this story. Is <laughs> I want to know. I'm anxious. So, so Knucklehead Nick is the guy who's proposing all this. And then one day, he finally, I mean, and we this guy messaged us on like, I'm throwing this out there, like a Sunday. No, it was, let's say, a Friday. And, you know, he's like, we'll do it later on in the week. Well, I remember it was a Sunday because we couldn't buy alcohol and everything was closed. Okay. <laughs> so then so then by Sunday, it basically turned into a like, and we just did a show on Friday or Saturday. Like, when were we doing the show? Saturdays? They were Saturdays, right? Yeah, yeah. We switched to Saturdays because Sarah said they were be- the weekends were better for it her. Was. It was. Even though she didn't show up for it. You know, <laughs> but, so, so we <laughs> So we just did a show Saturday with all our content that we had prepared. And then this guy says, Sunday, well, let's go into the studio right now and do it. So we don't have any fucking content. But he's like, let's do it right now. Let's do it right now. Come to find out, the only reason why, yeah, you know, the only reason why he wanted us to go right then on that Sunday is because he fucked something up <laughs> last time he was there, mm-hmm. and he didn't have a car. What? He didn't have a car. He didn't have a ride. He needed to go to Broad Ripple because he left some things unplugged, and he also left. He took some key with him that he wasn't supposed to take. Like he he fucked shit up. So he's already shady. Well, I know. all I to know me. is, yeah, he's a user. Yeah, basically. So we, you know, and that's an opinion. Strike one. <laughs> yeah, it is. So we take this guy up there, and then we go to record the demo, and it was, it was all right. The guy was a fucking idiot. He kept he kept interrupting us the entire time. We'll play that in a second. We actually have never aired before. We have the actual demo pilot that we recorded <laughs> with this guy, Knucklehead Nick. So we have all that. You're going to get to hear that. <laughs> But after we recorded it, then uh, he starts calling us like, like we're asking him, you know, like, hey, what did I can't even remember the guy who runs WI Jim, right? Jim Walsh. We're like, so what? What did Jim say about the demo? What did Jim say about the demo? And he's like, oh, I haven't gotten it to him yet. I wanted to pitch it to him on, you know, pitch it like it's some big fucking deal. Like, I want to pitch it to him on this specific day, this specific day. But he kept calling. This guy would call you like Nick would call like five times a day sometimes. And just you talk to him for a second, and then he, you know, he'd be like, "I'll be right back," and then he'll call you back, and he's just <laughs> constantly calling. And he wanted rides to go buy weed. What? Yeah, he's like, "Hey man, can you give me a ride to go pick up some weed?" And you know, it's like, dude, I don't like. That's, I mean, uh, it's like I smoke weed, sure, but I'm not fucking like you're a business affiliate. Yeah. Like, why am I gonna take your knucklehead ass all the way to the other side of town or wherever the fuck you want to go but to go buy some it? weed? No, I didn't do oh, it. I mean, I was asking. You told me to ask questions. I didn't do. John, did you? You did it once, right? Uh, yeah, one time. Yeah, but like I'm not doing that shit. I got nothing. Why? Why? What? What's? Why? Why would I want to do that? Why would I want to spend time with this guy? He's a fucking moron. Okay. I, don't know. I, just, <laughs> I just can't. I just can't handle this guy. All right. That's what I'm saying. Like this. So he, he's he's using you to go places. Yeah, he's just constantly calling. Needs something. He's okay. the most needy fucking person I've ever met in my life. <laughs> this is my opinion. But <laughs> 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 and let me. And then here's another thing. Okay, so. Okay, so after after the demo, I don't. I should have written this down, John. Am I forgetting anything? Um, no, this is right on track. We ended up, you know, not well. We we ended up talking to Jim directly about the uh, the pilot. We we're like, hey, we, we recorded this pilot. You know, we didn't know if you ever got a hold of it. Did you get to hear it? And, and I, he was like, yeah, everything sounds great. Um, we just need you to get some sponsors before you well, can get on the air. No, he sa- he said he never heard the pilot. Oh yeah, he never yeah, got yeah. to hear it. Jim said he never heard the pilot. He told. Uh, he he said, uh, God, what he said, I never heard the pilot, um, but Nick told me about you guys. So then, then I then finally, because Nick had been avoiding our phone calls for like three days, hadn't heard from him. Then finally, he calls back, or no, I sent him. I was calling him, and he's like, "Hey, man, I'm busy. I have I have a life. I have shit to do." And it's like, "Dude, you've been calling me fucking nonstop, and now when I'm trying to get a hold of you, now you're not answering your phone." So I finally get Nick on the phone. I say, "You know, I'm like, what happened?" Because we talked to Jim. He said, "Send us the pilot. I haven't heard it yet." Right. And then, like, that day or the next day, uh, I talked to Nick, and he goes, oh, yeah, I played the pilot for Jim a few days ago because I specifically asked when he played it for him. Right. And he said, and Jim passed. Yeah, Jim said he'll have to pass. Have to pass? Like, pass yeah. on you guys? Yeah, yeah it's, exactly. it's no good. He says it's not it's not FM radio format or something like that. Okay. I was bummed out by that. I was like, oh, man. Yeah, and I was God, like, what's wrong with that? <laughs> yeah, so in my head, I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. So I send an email to Jim, and I say, hey, you know, I was like, we haven't sent the pilot to you yet, but uh, Nick already told us you passed, but I don't think there's any harm in sending this to you anyway. 
And I sent it to him, and then he wrote back and said, "Yeah, that sounds good. Just work on finding some sponsors, and we'll, you know, we'll start you on like Fridays at 10 p.m. or something. You know, even at a time slot." Right. And we talked to him on the phone. Really, really nice guy. And uh, then we were like, "Well, should we continue?" Because Nick was talking about finding sponsors, and I said, "Is Nick still our contact person, or should we, you know, like stop? Like, what's the story with Nick?" And he basically said. Uh, is if you want to find sponsors, Nick, that's fine. But Nick is not affiliated with WITT anymore. Oh. Yeah. But then later Nick said that we got him fired. <laughs> that's what he said yesterday, how did, two yeah, days I, ago. Yeah. I don't see how, how we had anything to do with getting him fired. I thought he quit or something. Or I don't even know if he was ever working there to begin with. No, he was. it turns out he was all volunteer. That's what he was saying. He was all volunteer. Okay. And he's just a guy who – he's the type of guy, from what I can tell, that just attaches himself to projects and just, you know, gets them – tries to get them going and jumpstart them. Okay. And uh, we were one of the casualties of this. You know, we got brought in <laughs> as one of the things he was trying to – because I think he told Jim or whoever. I imagine that he told him something along the lines of, hey, I've got all this talent here that I can bring in. You need to bring in local Indianapolis shows. I've got some guys that are that are really good on iTunes and, you know, blah, 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 and sold us to the guy and – all that type of shit. Which I really appreciate. I appreciate the guy's energy and stuff like He's that. He's really but, good at that. Yeah, but there's, you know, there's uh, apparently we had some problems with him. <laughs> he's am, he's ambitious, but he fucks shit up. Like, well, okay, here's an example. Um, what were you going to say? Well, I mean, he's ambitious, but it seemed like he dropped the ball. Like, I mean, why, what? I, I don't know. That seems real strange. Yeah, it, it was strange. The whole situation seems a little strange. Well, even when we recorded the show, when I listened to it back, it would cut in and out. Like, and he recorded it. He took that into his hands. And he I'm the, he recorded the show, and it would, like, uh, 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 at times, oh. and it would jump around. Yeah. So he it's, was a volunteer? I have no idea. He acted <laughs> like he was a big wig. Well, he talks a big game. If you're a volunteer, you don't get fired. Right. That's a good point. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so... Exactly, and so technically that means we didn't get fired from Indiana Talks. Right. We were just we just got the plug pulled on us. Right. Okay. Yeah. So this this fucking Nick asshole. So, uh, what play? You know, we should play some of that that pilot there from the and just so you can hear what this guy did. Let me let me try and set this up. Oh, uh, this is actually long. Okay, let me explain what happened here. So, Nick said he wanted us to do a show straight through, like okay. all. All the way, just, you know, one hour so we can prove that we can do live radio. Mm -hmm. And he, when it was time to begin, he would, and he also told us we had complete creative control. That was one of the stipulations I told him from the beginning. Like, we're not going to, you know, we can move a little bit, but we're not, we're calling the shots here. Right. You know, because why would you want to sign on to something for free if they're telling you what to do? You you get paid to be told what to do. Right. And so this guy... (laughs) He says, we're going to do the show straight through all the way through. And then he ends up uh, stopping me every time I began. <laughs> yeah. And then so then at the end of that, when we actually finally started moving on, there wasn't even a real beginning to the show because, the, because there was all these false stops. Right. And so when it was time to cut this thing together in typical Chris Briggs show fashion, like we did that one time with the Cisner incident, we just <laughs> cut it up and just play it, you know, let it play itself out. Ooh. Because it's almost funnier than the actual regular beginning. It's it's fun to listen to. I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> That's my favorite episode. Yeah, and then also nobody Someone knows who Nick that. is because he's never been on the show before. So I introduced Nick. And basically, when it was time to send this this episode, I took it home and edited it and then gave it to Nick. And I was like, hey, Nick, here's the, here's the finished episode. You know, you can send it to Jim. And when he heard it, he was probably offended. Because I put a new intro at the beginning that explained what had happened. Oh. Yeah. So he probably didn't like being the butt of the joke. But that's what our show is, you know? Well, he wanted to be the big wig and... (laughs) Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's just... And if you're a joke. (laughs) It's ridiculous. So, yeah, play... So this is... What you're about to hear is exactly what got sent to Jim Walsh, the owner of WITT. To whom it may concern, my name is, well, you know, that's not even important right now. This is a radio show, a free-form radio show, whatever that may be. It's myself and John Rapp and a co-host of ours named Krabby Christine, who is not actually on this episode because we were rushed into recording this one because we love WITT. 
That's really what it comes down to. And uh, this gentleman, Nick, who is our producer on this episode, contacted us and wanted us to rush into the studio immediately. And normally we like to, although it is free form, we do like to actually plan out the shows. And we have our own kind of language and we work together, John and I. But when we got into the studio, it was a little different. And we were kind of pressured into it, like going, which I mean, we wanted to go, but we were pressured into doing it like, I think we knew six hours beforehand, which we had a show scheduled for that, three John? days. You know, like. So what this is, is basically an intro to Gary, I mean, uh, to Jim. <laughs> you know, kind of like, since Nick fucked it up, in my opinion, um, this was a recovery. You know what yeah, I'm saying, Yeah, this is our big shot. Like, you yeah, know, I was excited want, about this. Yeah, we yeah. wanted it to be really good for the, the owner of the station. Yeah, and I thought Nick fucked it up, so I was like, okay, I, we need to recover from this, and since there's no real beginning to the show, we'll put this on as the beginning. Right. You know? Right. All right, hit that, John. <laughs> on Wednesday, and we went in on a Sunday. And uh, it's you're, this is what you're going to get. Um, this gentleman is Nick, who's producing it. You're going to hear us talk about him. And uh, I just kind of wanted to, you know, put that out there and let you know that this is uh, even more up in the air than it normally is. And, and this guy had some ideas, and he would he would write notes, and we didn't know what these notes were, and he would hold them up, and it got really confusing. And that's that's really kind of my favorite part of this episode. Uh, but he wanted to do it like a uh, 55 minute straight through radio, like, you know, like a live radio, because, you know, we're practicing, because hopefully the goal is we'd love to go live, which would be amazing. But wow. he said we were going to go 55 minutes straight through, <coughs> which I was really excited about. And once it was time to go and we sat down, he immediately interrupted me and that is how the show will begin all right you ready yeah we're rolling oh we're rolling. yeah we're rolling oh no big deal but hey 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 chris how you doing buddy Hello there, like, my friend. Oh. You want me to count again? Like, not like that we're rolling like that. Like, I wasn't aware that we were just like, uh, boom, we're going. Right. I don't want this in there. Yeah, I know. Like, I not like 0% do I want this on the yeah, show. I, it's, I can easily click a button and edit it out, but that's just recording just in case something happens. So, so am I supposed to go now? I was unclear on what the CD purpose was. I just, I heard him say, it was like, we're rolling on the CD, and it's like, oh. Why did I go like that? I, I didn't know why the studio. For some was reason, there. he had a CD going. I just knew that it was. It's like we're rolling on film now, you know. It's like, but who's getting the film? Doesn't matter. He said we're rolling. Okay, on John. Film. He's he's instructing us. Are we ready? Yes. All right. Let him finish his giggle moment. What? Giggle moment. <laughs> his giggle moment. I don't know. Okay. He talks like a little girl. Yep. Hello there, my friend. My name is Chris Brake. And we are trying something new on WITT today. It's an unpredictable show, and we've been doing it for quite some time. I wouldn't start off like that. <laughs> I just start, like I said, your normal get go. Like, what a it's fucking moron. <laughs> like, what a fucking okay. moron. You, ha- you haven't listened to our show? We do this. <laughs> <laughs> Look, okay. Like, we're ho- we're going to try something new. Just go, like, that, that was my only problem. I want it to be just a flat out. This is what it is. Uh, they, do you Sorry. want to so just start out with the the guitar, I guess, it's is what he's saying. Like just a normal I am guitar. not going to be able to do the show without mentioning that we are on WITT. Okay, do it. Go. Are you, what? Are you saying that for some reason <laughs> we shouldn't say, say that it's our first... WITT, just say... Okay, he's doesn't even know. Just do what you're doing. <laughs> are you saying that because it's the beginning of the show, you want to use something else for the beginning of the show, and it's fine what later? Hello. Chris wants to do. Chris wants to do. <laughs> Hello. My name is Chris Brake, and this is not how I normally speak, but this is how I'm speaking to you right now. Again, my name is Chris Brake, and I'm here with my friend John Rapp. Hey, folks. This is something we call the Chris Brake Show. I don't know what it is, nor do you, but we're going to do it, and we're going to try it, something new, for you, right now, on the Chris Brake Show. (laughs) Yeah, like, I don't... That was my stunted. 
Yeah. Yeah. But I don't. But see, but he doesn't understand that when he's doing that, he's fucking with us. He's, like. Yeah, he's gonna totally mess with like the flow. Yeah, he's throwing us off. Yeah. Now he's got our fucking brains running a mile a minute. It's like we need to relax. Now you don't even know how to how and do you're this. Acting like beforehand. Yeah, I thought right. we were just gonna go in and do like we're supposed to do the show straight through fifty five minutes. You know, here we go. And then any time we fucking begin, he uh, he interrupts us. <laughs> He interrupts us. And what, do you, what were you saying, Sarah? He doesn't even know? No, he didn't even know. He was like, I just want you to be, just, I just want you to do that. Like, just, just start, just start it. And then you click the, the play button with the little. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, see, I edited that in later. Oh. Yeah, that wasn't even in there. Oh. I put that in there. That was just, needed, actually. Yeah, I put that in there just to give it the dramatic effect of what was happening. You know, the comedic effect. See, Nick, I know what the fuck I'm doing. And you're a fucking moron. Okay. Personal. You're a fucking <laughs> moron. <laughs> All right, and let, and let me say something else about... I, I want to make a public service announcement here. Uh, the definition of slander is when you knowingly say something false about somebody, okay? This this guy said, don't... You better not slander me on the air. He, slander <laughs> is when you say something knowingly false about somebody. I'm not saying anything false, okay? I might say opinions, but also what I'm saying is the truth, you know, not the opinions are the truth, but like th- these things did happen, and you can make your own decision on if this guy's a fucking intellectually disabled, intellectually disabled human being or not. <laughs> he did say the lawyers were going to be listening to this episode. Yes, lawyers are listening to this what? episode. Yeah, that's what I'm he, on this episode. <laughs> it says nothing to do with you. You're Man. a third party. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but you use my image. So you're fucking third party. Yeah, but who's Krabby Christine? That's not oh, her. Krabby, Krabby Christine is the co-host who actually shows up and responds when she says she's oh, going does, to. What else does Krabby Christine do? Does she do anything else? What do you she's mean? She's Robert's wife. She, co- she co-hosts Robert? the show. Yeah. Oh, wait. Robert Brown. Or Dr. Robert? Yes. You're a fucking retard. All right. Shut up. Yes, Dr. Robert. Oh, I only know her as... Krabby uh, Christine. Yes. Doc, Dr. Uh, Christine, the uh, medical well, assistant. Well, then if she's going to be normal, then you need to put her on there, not me. She's not normal. She's not. We, oh. <laughs> we called her in after after you After left. you abandoned us, we I called her in. I did not abandon you. Yes, you, you did. You no-call, no-showed like fucking no, four times in a row. did not. Yes, you did. <laughs> did Every not s- no-call, no-showed. Yes, show. oh my God. Okay, okay. What I like yes, about there is you that did. Even if there, there was anytime, no call, no, so you're here now. I like yes, that. that's like, good. I, I can but walk anytime, out the door and come back. I like that. Anytime, like we moved the show to Saturdays for you, right? And then you would not show up. Like we'd like, okay, it's seven o'clock, and then seven thirty. You know, and you're not responding. You're not responding to texts, and then you're like, oh well, maybe I might be there at eight. Okay, yeah, no, I'm definitely coming, but I'll be there at nine. And you never ever came. Well, and you d- and you did this like three days in a row, the exact same charade where I was putting bets with John. Well, I'm like, there was I'm like, I'm telling you right going now. Through. Then just tell me. Yeah, I, I did. I then just tell me you're that. not coming. I did. <laughs> tell me you're not coming. No, you did not. You fucking drew it out for like eight <laughs> hours. That's what I like. For eight <laughs> hours. Well, we don't like it. It's fucking hard to work well, with you. It's hard. I mean, okay. it's done. It's done. No, you're fucking done. No. I'm pulling. I'm pulling your fucking face off the website. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because you're still using my image. Yes, man. I am, because you abandoned us, and we're going to fucking continue to use it forever as long as we want to. No, I, no, there will fuck be. You, I'm gonna fuck get, you. I'm going to get some fuck legal. I'm going to get my lawyers to listen fuck, to this. Fuck you. Okay. <laughs> so, now what, how are you doing, Sarah? I'm good, I'm good. So, what happened with uh with Nick here? Well, like, so we, we, oh, did, we did the pilot and whatever, and all that kind of went, went. No, then, okay, hold on, here's, here's icing on the cake. Okay, here's icing on the cake. Okay. He then sent it to Jim so he says he claims he sent it to Jim and I asked him if he edited it and he said yes he said he took off the beginning and just had it start right to the show yes which which basically means it sounded something like like this my name is Chris Brake and this is not how I normally speak yeah, this is how I'm speaking to you right now so he made a choice without Again, consulting us on yeah. fucking doing this to our show Hey, folks. Which is not how we represent ourselves. Yeah, that sounds pretty lame. <laughs> yeah. Was he trying to be like your producer? Yeah, like I think what? so, but he was he wasn't clear on directions, I guess. Oh. And, and I, yeah, I, I don't know what he was trying to do with that. Um, and it, yeah, sometimes he would hold up signs, but the signs would be incorrect. The things what that they the, said on him, I thought that signs? was pretty funny. What did he, they say? Like you know, how producers hold up things in the windows. Yeah. Like this. 
like this this is a clever we were trying to play a, a, a song by bill wilson and uh we had had nick earlier in the show but like off the air pull up uh, a, a website i guess it was a it was like a college radio website that actually had the bill wilson songs on it so there was information on the site and i'm like i'm building up to the song i'm introducing and they were going to play this song and nick's just sitting there waiting to click play on it and while he's doing that he's his brain is fucking getting ahead of him there his brain's working a little too hard and he's reading stuff on the screen so yeah and he and he holds up a sign that says wfbu or read that john or play that normally play songs but i find it very fitting right now to play this song by bill wilson he's an old local indianapolis musician right yeah he's low this this guy doesn't even have a wikipedia page wow he is uh he's exclusive (laughs) yeah you you find the founder of alcoholics anonymous if you look up bill wilson (laughs) oh really yeah this guy i I believe it was the early 70s he had one album at least well he's had more than one but one on a major label right as far as i know and the liner notes say that it was he pretty much you know went around and he showed up at uh (laughs) <laughs> what does that mean? Our producer's oh. holding up a sign that says WFHB Music Director uh, Radio. We play music all the time. <laughs> yeah, we do. Is that what? There was we, a music director over there. Who was? Who was? Your dad at WFHB. Your dad? My dad was a music director at WFHB. Was I supposed to say that? I was just letting you know in case you wanted to. My dad? That part yeah, right here. My dad. <laughs> Bill Wilson. Oh, Bill Wilson's dad. <laughs> Bill Wilson was uh-uh. <laughs> What the hell? <laughs> I'm this part out. <laughs> no, this has to stay. Oh, this has to no. stay. Yeah. Uh, but Especially <laughs> if I just said that. <laughs> a sign just got held up Who's that said dad? WFHB music director. <laughs> Who knows? Well, and I didn't know what, what it meant. And then our producer just... Ex- After the fact, he was what he was doing, he was reading something on the screen, and whatever it was, was he thought it was... Chris's dad, like he thought it said, like is the director of something. It, it, whatever he was reading, he thought that it was Chris's dad. He thought that that's what he read. He was like, "Oh, so you should tell him that it's your dad." It's like, what? I have no oh idea. Oh my gosh! Wow. <laughs> all I all I know is that he asked us to do this live show all the way through, and as we're in the middle of doing it, uh, he interrupts. He interrupts, <laughs> and and he tries to provide useful information. It's actually the it's it's, I, it, I you wouldn't even call it useless. It's just erroneous information. <laughs> that should have definitely stayed. That Barbara's should have definitely <laughs> stayed. It was hilarious. Oh, I left it in. Yeah. Yeah, you, but he, he wanted to take it out. So you sound you don't sound normal in this. I didn't sound no, normal. You don't sound you don't <laughs> no, sound I was, like. Calm. I was all, I don't know. I was all freaked out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nick was just freaking me out the whole time. And you know, and, and he'd make these stupid faces like <clears throat> excuse me. He would just he would he'd make faces, you'd look over, like you'd be talking and you'd see somebody going <laughs> Which, if you can see I have my mouth wide open and I'm shaking my head. Yeah. And you'd say something and you'd look over and he'd be making a face like that. <laughs> so it's and, like what, am I saying the wrong thing? Like what what should I be saying? You just learn to kind of tune him out after a while. But yeah, you have to ignore him. I would totally ignore. Did he not listen to the show? That's the other thing I wanted to point out. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. He he just did not. He 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 must not have. He must not have. And people do this all the time with us. They'll they'll agree to be on the show or they'll book us or something, and then they won't. They don't even know what the fucking show is. They right. don't they don't know how we speak on it. They all don't right. know what we talk about. <laughs> and next thing you know, we got this fucking knucklehead Nick we have to deal with, and he's trying to like he's trying to rein us or something. He's trying to put a leash on us. I don't know what the fuck he's talking about, but he's, he thinks he knows what he's talking about. Is there anything left on that clip? Is there anything funny after that? I'm not sure to me that, that my father was the music director at WFHB, which I don't know why I keep yelling out call letters to a station that is not WITT. <laughs> oh, I see what you're doing. I see what you're showing me there. It still Post doesn't make any sense. Jason and WFHB music director Jim Morrison. What are you saying about my dad? <laughs> my dad will beat up your dad. <laughs> Did he say I screwed up? Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about him. So my father, the my father is the host of... <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, oh, since how we we probably are going to cut this. Are you trying to give him the description of Bill Wilson so he can read it? No, I, I thought I was. Yeah, that would be the description of the people who hosted his trip. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, no, that would be totally. That would be really that great. Would be, that would that would have been good. That would have been good. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. You, know, you 
should do it. How do I? How do I recover? He should say you should do your show. I'm sorry. I'm not going to talk for the rest. I don't think so. I should. No. Bill Wilson, the story is, is that uh, his That's me trying to pick it back up. Yeah, so that's basically what we were dealing with. And wow. that was the first incident. So basically then we found out that he, he he edited our show when sending it to Jim. So he told, like Nick told us that, that he cut the beginning off. And, uh, and then Jim said, you know, we're not affiliated with Nick. Don't count on him for anything, basically. And uh, so we kind of just blew the guy off and we're like, fuck it. You know, this guy's an idiot. I don't want to work with him ever again. Uh, and then he contacted us out of the blue and said, "Hey, I got you guys on Indiana Talks." And then he starts telling, explaining to us now that he's he's now the manager or something at Indiana Talks, an internet radio station that he said was, <laughs> I believe his words were, it was the complete opposite of WIBC. They're left wing and we're right wing. And right. yeah, he's That's like he's like he's like nuts. we're we're right wing liberal and they're left wing conservative. Right. And uh, <laughs> yeah, that's how this guy speaks. How old is he? Uh, I believe he's twenty. He's going to turn twenty-one really soon. What? But that's how he speaks. Like he just messes he's everything. He's a youngin. Up. Yeah, yeah, he is a youngin. But he talks a big game, and you're like, oh man, I used to run a. He's got these glory day stories. He tells about how he <laughs> used to. High ru- school. Nah, he used to run Woot FM. <laughs> Woot FM. Yeah, which is the internet radio station. You know, he's like, he's like, yeah, we were this and this, and just talking real big about it. And I'm like, hey, how long was that? It's called Woot. Woot. I was like, how long did that go for? And he was like. Oh, about a month. It's like, what? <laughs> it was Aww. something like that, or three months. And right. like, Yeah, like, then you start to realize the guy's just kind of delusional. And, <laughs> which is fine. I would have just, I would have just let him go. But, the story kept building. And he, he wanted, it, it, he basically, we would have let him go and just said, fuck him. But he started talking money. Like, he was going to pay us. And he started, like, giving out numbers, the amount of money he was going to pay us, like, per month to do this show and how we were going to go live five days a week on Indiana Talks and it was giving us numbers and how after the first month then it'd go up by double the second month and by the third month you'd be making this much and it was just it was like oh man it sounds great Ponzi scheme <laughs> but then he wants to then you know he wants us to do live events but you know like for example like he says he knows a pizza restaurant or something that they've got a stage and he'll go set up shop there and we'll do the show live in this restaurant and it's like dude I don't Hey, do you listen Little to Caesars. our show? Do you listen to our show? Yeah, it's not. No, it's not family friendly, <laughs> not at all. and it's not even that funny. Like, right. like we're not stand up comedians. We're not going to go sit there and interrupt or try and entertain people while they're eating dinner. Like, it'd, it'd be horrible. We'd make fucking fools yeah. out of ourselves, and we'd piss everybody <laughs> off. Yeah. You know, and we'd make the station look bad. Right. It would just be bad for everybody, but he was all about doing that. And <laughs> yeah, and he'd, he'd call us to try and get us to do things. Like, for example, he wanted us to to cover the, the state fair, or not the state fair, the, the the parade, the 500 parade. And he just had all these ideas, and we'll do this, and just tons of shit. And finally, it was like, okay, man, that, that sounds really hectic and chaotic, you know, but I guess, guess we'll do it. And then it turns out he doesn't even have permission to do it. You know, he doesn't even have permission from the guy who runs the station because to do the live show, you'd have to cut off somebody else's show right, on the radio. Right. And he doesn't have permission to do that. But he's he's getting us all worked up like, hey, we're going to go do this and right. getting all stressed out on how Did this thing's going to. Did you guys ever ask to like meet with him and like whoever he was getting all this information from? And I put information in quotes. <laughs> <laughs> you mean like the guy who ran Indian yeah, Talks? Yeah, like did you ever verify all this crap that he was saying? We, we should have. We did. Well, we did eventually contact the guy from Indiana Talks. But that's only because he Nick wanted us to go and do a live show from the Marion County Fair. Mm-hmm. And it was supposed to be during the day. Um, you know, and he was, he was, I guess he was supposed to provide all the equipment. It just en- turned up into a big headache. And because of him not checking with things, it ended up being on at 10 p.m., which the fair, everything at the fair closes at 10 p.m., except for the rides. They still went until 11. <laughs> so the fair is basically closed. And the only reason why we're going on at 10 p.m. is because that was our slot anyway that they played the Chris Break show. And he just, you know, he, he couldn't get, he couldn't get any other shows knocked off, you know, right, to right. open up time. So, and it was raining. It just turned, and then, oh yeah, and it was supposed to. It was supposed to be in the exhibition hall, and then it turns out that closes at ten. So next thing you know, he's telling us we're going to be doing the show outside, doing it at ten p.m. And it's pouring down rain, you know. It just it turned into this big. Oh, and I need to 
He only has two <laughs> microphones, and but he's, he has all these guests we're going to interview. Be under the octopus. The, got all the these rest. guests we're going to interview and only two microphones, and it's like, well, that's not going to work because we're going to need three. And he's like, why don't you and John share a microphone? I'm like, what are you, a fucking idiot? The co-host can't, you know, the host can't share a microphone. Like, what the hell are you thinking? Why are you even trying to do this? It's destined to fail. Well, he's obviously very, I mean, I don't know. He seems very new at the whole everything yeah yeah and honestly so are we so i mean we took it a lot of it in stride you know it was like okay you know people make mistakes sometimes that's fine but i guess it just got to be one mistake yeah Yeah, one mistake after another (laughs) and like i said we would have fucking not dealt with them but he wasn't it was basically the more he wanted from us then the less we were trying to give Mm -hmm. you know just because he just seemed like he always wanted us to do something then you know like we're doing a live event Bring equipment. It's like, why am I bringing, like, look at all this shit, Sarah. Yeah, I see it. It actually like, looks a lot better than, like I said, it looks a lot better than <coughs> but last time I was here. Can you imagine me unplugging all this shit and taking it somewhere and setting it up in the rain? No. And, <laughs> which, goats. To be fair, right. yeah, goats. goats. We saw a goat. Pigs. Yeah, I know. I saw. Dexter, you saw him you <laughs> liking our Facebook page? Yeah, 500 pound. Uh, what was he going to say? 250 <laughs> pound goat. He's, he's 250 pounds? He's like, no, he It was be. a tiny goat. Did I you know, see yes, that? It's I a saw tiny that. goat. John Rapp goes, we got a 250 pound goat here. <laughs> I just thought he was very dense. <laughs> so to be fair it did not rain everything and everything went off without a hitch like while we were there nice yeah like nick did a good job yeah. with scheduling the guests because that was something because he had me nervous before but i told him i said make sure you get a time for all these people right and work all this out and he did and it was uh you know i was like hey record the thing you know we'll put it up for our podcast because i don't like i don't like doing live live only internet radio shit because i don't think anybody listens to internet radio at least people who listen to our show don't listen to internet radio. They like to listen to it and download it whenever they want. Um, so, but they're an internet radio station, so their shit just goes up once and then it's gone, like mm-hmm. like terrestrial radio. So, uh, he broadcasted it live on the internet radio at IndianaTalks dot com, and we we went an hour. We started about ten oh six, ten oh seven, went up till eleven, a little after eleven, I think. Yeah. Interviewed like four or five people. Nick brought him in. Uh, we interviewed like the the what, the queen, the, yeah, the the Marion queen. County, yeah, the Marion County the, Fair queen. I guess they, had, oh. you know, like they had like a, a beauty pageant. Yeah, beauty pageant. Oh, okay. Yeah, interviewed her. Interviewed the, like the, the treasurer. Yeah, I think he was the treasurer. Uh, interviewed a pro- state prosecutor who's uh, going to be a judge. Wow. Named, yeah. Uh, Linda. <laughs> wow. Linda yeah. Major. Is her name? Uh, she was really nice. Uh, we interviewed this the Worm Lady, Doctor Worm Lady. Yeah, Doctor Worm. She was amazing. She was a lot of fun to talk to. We had a really good time. I ate shark, fried nice. shark. Was that good? I I thought it tasted well. like I, thought, <laughs> I still taste it now, but I thought it tasted like uh, tough chicken. But <laughs> yeah, it was it was a good time. And Nick <laughs> Nick was bringing the food. <laughs> the dorsal like thin. in that hour. Nick was bringing food, bringing <gasps> guests, just lining them up, and it went nice. smooth. Nice. He had signs that had people's names on them, like who we were yeah. interviewing and stuff. Like, so he got the signs right? Got the signs right. right he nice. got no, he was still right. making faces that day, though. Oh, uh, was he? Uh, yeah, he was still making faces. <laughs> yeah. So then then when it's time to, uh, you know, when we're closing up shop, I'm like, hey, here's my flash drive. Put that show on there. And he's like, oh, no. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Uh, for some reason, uh, the show did not get recorded. <gasps> so he, but it was still live. It still streamed live, like it was supposed to. And he okay. says, "Well, we don't normally record." It's like, "Well, we do." So yeah. that's what you fucking do for us, you know? You record it, right? Because that's what I want you to do. I should have brought my laptop, so but I didn't want to bring all that shit. Was never. He said he had it, it covered. Gone. It's lost in the like it just, it aired, radio. It's yeah, gone it aired forever? one time on the internet <gasps> radio. Oh, that's yeah. So sad. <laughs> so I didn't say anything to him. I wasn't going to bust his balls. I did send him a message later that night. I said, hey, man, you fucked up. I know you fucked up. You know you fucked up. I'm not going to bust your balls. You did a good job with everything else. Then John finds out from two of our listeners who tried to listen to the show that uh, that started at 10 o'clock that uh, it was our last week's episode that aired up until 1035. Then it cut on with the live feed <laughs> uh, halfway through us interviewing our last guest. Are you serious? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God. So essentially, we in my head now How did we that wasted. Even we wasted every single person's time. But now, now they so, don't know that. Yeah, yeah, they don't know that. And Nick won't tell them. But so then John asked Nick, 
And this is this is all just what we're saying. Like Nick has a different side of the story. We asked him to come on and defend himself, but he didn't want to. And he actually suggested that we go on with a different uh, show subject because because um, something lawyers will be listening. I don't know. He's a fucking idiot. But, uh, but you know, is that? I'm not saying anything. The, the I'm not saying boy who called wolf, anything though? false. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying anything false here. Who's all this stuff yours? really happened. And if I want to say he's a fucking idiot, I can say he's a fucking idiot because that's my opinion. Oops, it's not Keller and Keller. You know, <laughs> they're pretty strong. Yeah, if Keller and Keller calls, then <laughs> we're gonna settle. settle. We're gonna settle. <laughs> <laughs> settle my foot in your fucking ass. All right, so, so what happened after that, John? Well, then Nick said that no. In, oh, you in asked fact, him. Yeah, it was like I heard that the show didn't really air, you know, until ten thirty. You know, uh, what happened with that? He was like, no, I was listening to it the whole time. There's no way that it that it didn't air. He's like the the thing was actually on air the whole time. And he said he was listening to it on Stitcher. But our listeners were on their webpage, you know, indianatalks.com. He said the TuneIn app, I think. Oh, TuneIn. Yeah, TuneIn. He said he was listening on TuneIn. So, I mean, it's just like, it's, it's one of those things where it's like he said, she said, it's like, okay, you say it worked. I say it didn't. How are we going to prove it? Well, probably not. But, you know, it's just kind of, it's just kind of irritating. But, you know, it, you know, you work with, you work with things like that with people, you know, ne- ne- neither Chris or I wanted to break ties with the guy. It was just kind of. You know, you get the feeling that someone may be lying to you, but you can't prove it, you know? Right. He said it was on, and we say it wasn't, but no one really knows for sure. Yeah, he fucked up. Or we think, I think he fucked up. So, hold on. <laughs> but then there was another dialogue that transferred, or uh, that happened between Chris and Nick that, that shut us down. <laughs> Is that right? I don't know. Yeah, I'm pulling up here uh, a dialogue between Nick and myself. That caused all this. That I'm going to have. I should have done this before, but I didn't have the idea. Uh, pulling it up on both Facebook, on both my both my devices. So now it's going to be like a script. Who's Nick? It's going to be exciting. Uh, you're going to be Nick. <laughs> okay. Yes, you will be Nick. Let's see if I got these things under control. All right. All right. Hmm. I'm excited. <laughs> a little bit. You should be as good as good dialogue. Good, better it's than Dawson. Uh, <laughs> it's up there. <laughs> It'll be close. Okay, here we go. We're gonna start this thing. Ooh, how do I make this bigger? <laughs> I don't think I can. <laughs> Sarah, have you ever thought to wish you could make somebody's penis bigger? I've never had to do that. It just happens. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. So you're the white, I'm the blue. Okay. Okay. And here's how I started the conversation. Oh, yeah. Did we explain that we then sent the email to... Is that to, him? Yeah. Don't say his name. That's him. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Does he look like an idiot? I don't know. I mean, that's mean. We can't know, say that. I don't know. He looks like somebody from, like... Well, here's what... <laughs> salute your shorts or something. <laughs> Whatever. It's my that's, opinion. That's just what, you know, God bless the guy. That's what he looks like. He can't help it. No. I'm not, <laughs> no, I'm not saying... <laughs> no, I would. I would. I would. I would definitely say things about him. I, he looks like something gonna... from like the '90s TV show or something with his hair. Yeah, he looks like a bad sitcom character. Writer strong. No, that's a compliment. He looks more like Donkey Lips. But <laughs> no, I know. I know. I <laughs> okay, so <laughs> okay, go. So we sent. So John asked him what happened. Is there any way of verifying? And he said, I'll check the logs. He said, and then he never got back to John. He said, I'll have to ask Jim. He was like, no. Gary. Yeah, Gary. I'll ask Gary. He's like, I'll ask Gary because he would have called if, if it wasn't on or whatever. Yes. Like, implying and, that Gary was listening to it. So. And Sarah, a couple of days went by, and he never once responded to John until John sent an email to Gary saying, hey, uh, did our show air? And he said, let me ask Nick. He's in charge of all that. So... Uh, then uh, I don't get a response from John or Nick and or or anything. I basically wrote back to Gary and I said, I don't know if you asking Nick is going to actually inform you or not because I don't think he's aware of it if it recorded. He, he seemed to think you would be listening, blah, 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 blah. And Gary never wrote back. So let's begin the conversation, Sarah. Okay. I said to this to Nick, did you ever figure out if the first half of the show aired or not? Yeah, and I told John. I don't appreciate two separate emails to Gary. I confirmed in server logs and automation logs, two different sources that say the same thing. Last we heard, you told John you'd look into it. We wanted an answer, so we contacted Gary. 
Well, now I have to deal with Gary and why a show is asking him tech stuff and bypassing me. And also, I got about 25 other shows to deal with and never have bypassed me. And they have never bypassed me to Gary. <laughs> you had to add. <laughs> Shut up. With something like that. Hold it, on, hold on. Before you read the next one, you had to add words to it yeah. because he doesn't write. Yes. Like, yes. Okay. Yes. I'm going to read it word for word. I'm not going to add anymore. <laughs> it makes me look bad. And I got my shit right on other than the recording, <laughs> which we usually don't do. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Okay. So what is it you're saying? It, <laughs> it did or did not start when it was supposed to. Are you, are you saying there was no problem with the broadcast and that your logs tell you it played on IndianaTalks.com perfectly fine? That's exactly what I'm telling you. Okay, cool. This BS better not happen again. I'm pissed. Okay, cool. Fuck you. That's what I thought. Okay, now let me let me explain what happened there. He's He just got mad at me. He just said, this BS better not happen again. I'm pissed, okay? First of all, why do I give a fuck if he's pissed? He didn't record the show, so I should be pissed. He failed to, to play the show on the internet, so why should... I'm, I'm pissed. Right. Mm-hmm. And this little bitch is saying that he's mad because I went over his head just to confirm if the show played or not. Yeah. What does it matter? What yeah. does that have to do with anything? Why should that affect him? Why is he mad at me? What did I do wrong to him? This BS better not happen again. Fuck you. That's, that's what I thought. Okay. Yeah, okay. So I said, you're mad at us because you made a mistake and had to explain it to your boss? I didn't make a fucking mistake. Why does that mean that you were allowed to be mad at us? We didn't do anything wrong. I'm not going to have to be your done. You made a mistake and now you're punishing our show. <laughs> Sounds really fair, Nick. Thanks, man. You punished your show saying, fuck me. I'm going to isolate that clip. <laughs> <laughs> I said, we we did the right thing, and you said, this BS better not happen again, I'm pissed. What kind of response did you think that you'd get from me by saying that? We had to contact Gary because we wanted a direct answer. I gave John one. It's not my fault he didn't get back. Passing blame. <laughs> Us contacting Gary is not BS, man. I'm done. Goodbye. Not my problem now. I appreciate your professionalism. You're too. Fuck you. You're acting like a child. I did the same thing you did, man. Are you not getting your way like a child? No. This situation, how you're handling this situation is really unprofessional, man. No, I'm tired of the BS. If it wasn't for me talking to Gary, you would have been pulled the day before the live broadcast. But I rooted for you, but I'm done. You did this at wit and soon after I got fired. And that is our fault? That's it. That's the end. <laughs> That's the exchange. So that in that conversation, we got fired from WITT. I mean, I'm sorry, from Indiana Talks. <laughs> in that conversation, we got fired from Indiana Talks. Does that, I mean, that sounds fine, right? That's perfectly acceptable. We went over somebody's head. That's what you do. And if you go over somebody's head, it means somebody's not doing their job. Yeah. The only time you would ever go over somebody's head. I've been a manager. Right. And, uh. I never had anybody go over my head, you know? The only time I've seen people go over managers' heads is when they're not doing their job. That's fucked up. Hmm. I don't know. I don't think he would – my personal thoughts is I don't think he would get fired if someone went over – Yeah, I don't think so either, but he's volunteer. He's just – like he said in the the conversation, it makes him look bad. Yeah, I mean, well, I do your, see that. Do your fucking job, and you won't have to worry about it. <laughs> deal with us. If you deal with us and keep us calm, you know, then you won't have to worry about us. But if you're not doing your job, and we're over here saying... Well, yeah, and I mean, if there's mistakes on your show, you know, only 30 minutes got aired, and all these people... You know what I mean? Like, yeah. obviously, there needs some, you need to go above his head. And there's no reason why, at 1035, it would just randomly start working. Like, somebody knows why it started airing at 1035. Like, there's a record of that. Like, it didn't just randomly, oh, it works. Like, somebody, you know, saw a plug and plugged it in or something. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Or somebody saw that something wasn't working and turned it on. Mm. Like, why would it just start working out of nowhere? Mm-hmm. Somebody knows what the fuck happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But fuck Knucklehead Nick. He's an idiot. I will never work with him again. John, you're welcome to. <laughs> <laughs> but, yep, that's, I think that's pretty much the end of the story. Wow. That yeah. was a long story, but... That was a really long story. <laughs> I'm sure it's going to continue after this airs. 
<laughs> yeah, and I'm going to put we're going to put the whole conversation on the Facebook page too. I wish that he was on the show. Like Chris said, we we invited him to come on the show. Chris yeah. Chris wanted him on the show, but he said he didn't want to do it. Why not? I don't know why. That's a good question. Maybe he he because he knows he's wrong. I imagine, right? Uh, or do you think he just wants to save face? What do you yeah, think? I think so. He doesn't want to be associated with it anymore. Oh, let me explain this too. I forgot to include this one detail. I had that conversation with them. That wasn't the end. Uh, <laughs> I then took screenshots of all that and sent it to the uh, his boss. <gasps> <laughs> I think it's something that had to be done. I think it's something that had to be done. <laughs> I wrote, what, do you, what do you think happened because of that? Nothing. Was he already fired? If he's a good employee, he, nothing should happen, you know? No, he still works at Indiana <laughs> Talks. As far as I know. I mean, I sent him. I sent the guy a very nice email. You know, I said, hi, Gary, this is Chris. I just had a Facebook conversation with Knucklehead Nick that resulted in him pulling the show from Indiana Talks. I'm not sending this email to get the show put back in rotation. I'm just sending this email so you can be aware of who you have working for you and can see firsthand how he deals with these types of situations. We had a similar situation with Nick at WITT that we had during the live Marion County Fair show. He always seems to mess up something major, and our frustration with his incompetence is what led to this conversation. I've attached screenshots of the entire unabridged conversation. Thank you for taking the time to read this email, and we really do appreciate you playing the Chris Brake Show on Indiana Talks. We're grateful for the opportunity and are disheartened by how our partnership with Indiana Talks was terminated. Nice. That's a very nice, polite it email. Yeah. I got nothing wrong with Gary. Some good you know? adjectives. Yeah. Disheartened. Disheartened. I had to work with that one yeah. with my sister. <laughs> that That's was a good one. I like <laughs> Disenchanted. <laughs> That's not a bad one. It's not bad. All right, so we also have another thing we need to announce. Uh, we're going to take a break before we do it, but uh, we will be. We have this huge Dawson's Creek challenge coming up. So if that's something that interests you, uh, stick around. If not, then go ahead and turn this podcast off because it'll be Dawson's Creek the rest of the time we're here. But we're going to have the Secret Lover Podcast Girls on the show. Is that right, John? Yeah, looking forward to that. All right, we'll be right back. Peace. <laughs> All right. We just were told that Sarah will not be joining us when we return. No, I won't. I wanted to talk to you about uh, your new job. Uh, well, can we do it again? And I won't be a, a flake? Uh, I, oh, will yeah. you? Huh? W- will you? <laughs> will you? What would you say? Will you? No, I won't. Uh, uh, wait. Yeah, so, come uh, back next time. Yeah, come back on Monday. Okay. At what time do you want to come back? Do you want to come back uh, like a, earlier? Well, no. I mean, if we can start the show at like 8.30, that's awesome. Come no. On. No. <laughs> okay. so why did you ask me what time? <laughs> like, no, we have to set, like, we start the show at 8, we start the show at 9. We oh. show up at 8.30, start the show at oh, 9. Oh, okay, that's okay, That's what okay. we do. So, you're saying that it'd no, be better. No, this is cool. Like, this is cool. Like, no, eight. we can move it up an hour. Like, that doesn't bother me. Yeah, we can. We just need to know ahead of time. Like, we didn't know that nine o'clock wasn't for you. You know. Uh, well, I mean, ten is just like kind of late for me because I'm. Don't be a pussy. I'm. I can't. I'm tired. <laughs> you need a massage. Yeah. Okay, so next week you're going to show up at what time? Me. Yeah. I will be here at eight thirty. Oh, eight thirty. Yeah. You showed up like today at like seven thirty. No, I did not. Eight. You showed up at eight. Yeah. No, you showed up at seven. Well, forty nine because the final Jeopardy just started. <laughs> <laughs> I can yeah, I'll probably be here at like between 8 and 8:30. Okay, do you want to show up at 8? Do you want to call it 8 and start the show at 8:30? I'm sure. just saying. Yeah, 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 that's good. So we can get as much time from you as there possible. There we go. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So John, yeah. does 8:30 sound yeah. good to you? Yeah. I mean, yeah, show up at 8. Yeah. All right, cool. And John didn't even know you were coming today for the record <gasps> Did until you the, not? <laughs> No. Aww. No, until he got the message. <laughs> nice. All right, well, yeah, I won't be here when you guys get back. All right, well, thank you, Sarah. I'm Yay. sure all our listeners enjoyed hearing your face. Yes. <laughs> I'm glad you guys can still use my image. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Ass. <laughs> we'll be right back with The uh, Secret Lover. Thank you. 
All right, we are back, and we have Latoya and Lenny from the Secret Lover Podcast. Hey, guys. Hello, ladies. How are you doing tonight? Good. Doing pretty well. That's good. And what's the reason why we have you on is because I like to, every once in a while, go into iTunes and search for podcasts with the phrase Dawson's Creek. <laughs> <laughs> it's on I'm honest. Yeah, I do that just to see what people are doing. Uh I haven't heard like a full fledged dedicated Dawson's Creek type thing that was actually they're all they're all different. You find a few of them. Um the British one was actually pretty good, but they only talked about Dawson's Creek. They was I think it was We Love Telly. <laughs> <laughs> they only talked about that for a little bit. But uh your guys's you did two full episodes that were each an hour long. Just yep. bas- basically just asking each other opinions like what do you think of what do you think of Jack McPhee? And I thought it was hilarious. I loved it. Oh, thank you. Excellent. I feel like I should start my own Dawson's Creek podcast. It's going to happen eventually, honestly. I will glad <laughs> I will gladly be a guest anytime if you want me on. <laughs> yes. Uh, because I have I have a uh, I have I guess what do you call it? I have an exciting view. I have a different view because mm-hmm. I noticed that you two uh, were just saying that there's no way that anybody <laughs> would want Joey to end up with Dawson. And that that nobody thinks Joey should end up with Dawson, and <laughs> I am I am definitely Team Dawson all the way. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I was I was surprised by that. Basically, when I heard you say that, I'm like, dude, I gotta fucking call these bitches up. Like, I need to <laughs> I need to talk to these people. Gotta give us a piece of your mind. Yeah. You you are like the one Team Dawson person ever. Congratulations. I think so. I don't even think James Vanderbeek is Team Dawson. No. Exactly. I don't. I'm trying to. I think I saw an interview with him where he actually did say that he, she should have ended up with Pacey. <laughs> oh, you're all alone. I know. I know. I don't watch the show. What's so bad about Dawson? I mean, he's the main character. You'd think he'd I, be likable. I believe they. You would think that. I believe they. <laughs> I don't, one of you two described him as very punchable. <laughs> yes. I'm pretty sure that was me. Yeah. yeah. And I, I do agree with that. I wish I could tell your voices apart. I wish there were some different frequencies or something. I'm having problems. I think our anyway. voices are different. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to... I don't even... Hold on. Who's... Let me hear Lenny. Hi. Okay. So Latoya is the one who said, I think our voices are different. Yes. All right. I figured it out now. Okay, so I will I will be battling. What we have here is a Dawson's Creek challenge where I will be battling uh Latoya, right? Yes. Uh for the for the the crown. What what is the crown? Yeah, we haven't talked about that. What does the winner get and what does the loser have to do? I have no idea. I guess <laughs> the loser has to uh basically say that Joey deserved to end up with Pacey. <laughs> So I'm assuming that you're going to lose. I think that's a great idea. I think there should... Well, I think we should do the plug things where, uh, mm-hmm. like, at the beginning of, like, I say for five episodes, and I have no problem doing this, uh, basically say that uh, the Secret Lover podcast are the queens. <laughs> and check I them like out. That. Yeah, something like that. So you would have to say the, the Chris, Chris Break Show. show are the kings. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Does everybody agree to that? And I think I think it should be at the I'm beginning. Probably, yeah. It has to be at the beginning of the show. <laughs> you know, I don't want <laughs> nothing any... else said. Just that. Yeah, or I mean, you could say something else too. But you know, I don't want any end of the show things to where people don't <laughs> they don't listen to the whole episode and they don't hear it. Right. <laughs> it needs to be a full shaming in progress. Okay, acceptable. <laughs> and, acceptable. And maybe we can also make like a little meme where the other person has to post on their page, like, you know, you guys would have to post Team Dawson and I would have to post Team Pacey or something. (laughs) That would would be cool. (laughs) You can't bring yourselves to do that? That's so painful. (laughs) (laughs) I'll do it, but it will hurt. (laughs) All right, so that's uh, plugs, five plugs, and uh, is that that excessive, five? I think it's good. good. All right, so five plugs at the beginning of the show, and... uh, a sh- of an official shaming banner to be posted on the Twitter or the Facebook. Lovely. Uh, and what what are your guys' credentials? I know you do. You do more than the podcast. Don't you guys review shows for, uh, like, Gawker and other websites? Yep. Uh, I write for uh, Gawker, AV Club, a few other things. Well, that's very good. For uh, Televixen and Full On Monet's, which is new. What was the last one? Fullonmonets.com. Full on Monets? Yeah. Like, like the, the clueless like quote. The painter? Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. Thank painter, you. Yeah. 
<laughs> Thank you very much for, for clarifying that. You're welcome. <laughs> um, all right, let's let's do this, John. You're going to be the announcer. Okay, and the way this is going to work is um, we got uh, how many do we have here? We've got six questions, and then um, we're going to go back and forth. So the first one will be either to Latoya or Chris, and then the next one will be to the other person. If Chris gets the question wrong then LaToya can jump in and try to steal that from him, and everybody gets a point for each question that they get right. So at the end of it, we'll tally the points and and see who wins. Who's going to go first? Do we do a coin coin toss or something? Uh, I'll I'll let them go first. Okay. Okay. (laughs) But hold on, but it's it's one person, right? Because my sister prepared questions, and then uh, Lenny prepared questions, right? Yeah, right, right. right. Yeah, Lenny's got some ball breakers. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, question number one. LaToya, what is mm-hmm. Joey's dad's name? Oh, crap. <laughs> now, we do have multiple choice. Chris's sister uh, put multiple choice on, on the questions that she came up with. Should I read those? Sure. Okay. <laughs> I just I always just know him as her prison dad. Okay. I never think about his name. Right. Okay, is it Mike? Is it Bill? Is it John? Or is it George? Oh, it's Mike. You're right. It's Mike. Oh, shit. <laughs> so one for LaToya. All right, I marked it. Okay, good. Mark it, dude. All right. Okay. I marked th- it one. Okay, this one is for Chris. <laughs> Joey joins a band in season five. What is the band's name? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> is it Killer Saints, Aggressive Mediocrity, Disco Cadavers, or Dirty Intelligence? Oh, my God. <laughs> Can you read those? Yeah. First, first of all, I want I do want to say that I've actually seen that stage. I've been there in real life and <laughs> seen that stage that they played on. Wow. At the, uh, what the fuck? At the Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> at the Hell's Kitchen. Yeah. I'm a creek freak. Okay, go. John, read those uh, again. Um, the band's name is Killer Saints, Aggressive Mediocrity, Disco Cadavers, or Dirty Intelligence. Damn. <laughs> I've got it down between Killer Saints and Aggressive Mediocrity. Um. Oh man, I'm gonna have to go with aggressive mediocrity. You're right. That's what oh it was. yes. <laughs> okay, that was getting scary for a second. So <laughs> I I would not have known the dad's name. I would have guessed really? Mike. I would have guessed Mike. But see that one. I would have if if you would have asked me that, I would have turned it down because um my sister actually mentioned that one to me oh, okay. earlier and my answer was gareth which was actually his <laughs> his real name oh the actor's name and i said i should have got points for that but <laughs> okay latoya number three who does joey kiss under a full moon is it pacey oh my god oh, <laughs> these, are, these are so hard so you got it it's wow Jack. i think i might lo- end up losing this thing. <laughs> Have you guys seen all of the episodes? Yes. I think they've seen them more than once. I've seen them more than once. I do like a yearly rewatch. <laughs> oh, really? So you guys really like Dawson's Creek? Well, Lenny just watched it for the first time, thus the podcast. Right on. Yeah, Chris is kind of doing the same to me. He started me watching it. I've only seen a couple of the, the first ones on the first season. but you got to keep going. <laughs> There's so many of them. It gets better in season two. Does it? And then especially season three. <laughs> yeah, season know, three. Because of Pacey, of course. I'm telling you, Gretch- Gretchen's my favorite out of all of them. Really? Yeah. I, actually, I really like Gretchen, but... I noticed, yeah. And, you, heard, and yeah. you didn't understand why she should be with Dawson. <laughs> <laughs> Which I can understand that, too. And they did kind of just throw her in there so Dawson could have somebody. <laughs> well, you know, it's one of those things where I don't understand it because it's Dawson, but at the same time... As opposed to Dawson Joey, I would prefer like Dawson Gretchen or Dawson Jen. So, like, I feel like they make him less terrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that I, the Dawson Jen was pretty good. I'm a big fan yeah. of that. She got a little weird though. Her character got kind of strange during that. <laughs> With the whole yeah. ET, the ET and the yeah, the, the ET thing. That's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> that just shows her acting chops. Just really, the fact that she made it convincingly that she could fall for Dawson shows her <laughs> acting chops. All right, what's what's the next one, John? All right, Chris, what city did Dawson spend time in during the summer with his mom before season three? Was it Boston, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, or Los Angeles? 
What city did Dawson <laughs> spend time in? <laughs> well, that was before that was before Eve, right? Was that when he was coming back, or? Yeah. Okay, hold on. I, I think you guys just helped me a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> All right. I let feel me, like you need the help. I do. Let me, why did I create? Why I, this actually wasn't even my idea. This was my sister's idea, but I think she's going to get me screwed here. All right, <laughs> your sister is great. <laughs> All right, John, read that one more time. What city did Dawson spend time in during the summer with his mom before season three? Boston, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, or Los Angeles? Man, <laughs> I gotta say Philadelphia. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> it was between that and Pittsburgh. I'm, dude, I'm sweating, but somehow I'm guessing these right. There, I think they're back there somewhere. All right, dude. So I have two. Secret Lover has two. Chris Break Show has two. Secret Lover Podcast has two. Tied neck and neck. And there are two more questions left. And this is just a practice oh, round. We're gonna have a full, a full blown. <laughs> Contest next week. <laughs> I'm stressing out now. <laughs> you guys, you guys will have to take notes. Go and do your homework. <laughs> okay, Latoya, number five. When Dawson redecorates his room and takes down all his movie posters, what is the first poster he places over his bed? Imagine. That was an easy one. That was an easy one. <laughs> the answer is imagine. <laughs> Okay, yeah, his sister has them categorized, too. Like, there's easy ones, medium ones, and then some hard ones. So we'll get into that next week. But you guys think that was an easy one? Yeah, we might have to come up with a different point system so we can get some real competition here and (laughs) place bigger bets, you know? Yeah, make them worth different points. Like, if a hard one is, you know, really hard, you can have two points or something. Yeah. Okay, we got one left. Uh, Six. Chris, what did Jen name her daughter? Yeah, give me give me the names. Yeah. I know. Give Was me the it names. Emma, Sarah, Amy, or Lily. It is Amy. You're right. All right, so that was a tie. Three to three. Wow. That yeah. was, this is going to be a close game. <laughs> this is going to be a barn burn. And, and this, since this was practice, <laughs> we don't even need a tiebreaker. Right. Man, you guys are evenly matched. That was wow. an easy one. At least we both had easy insane. ones at the end. Yeah. It's going to be very intense. Very intense, and we're going to have questions from uh, Lenny as well. We're going to throw those in the mix. So, yeah, just yeah, just go back and forth. You know, Lenny, you better have made some like really hard questions. <laughs> I read through. <laughs> I read through them, and not knowing much about the show, there was only a couple ones that I n- knew the answer to. So, yeah, I think that I think she dug deep there. <laughs> Plus, you have to give some easy ones so people listening can actually maybe know what they are. <laughs> I wish we had money so we could bet some real money on this. <laughs> yeah, I wish I had money, too. <laughs> Speaking of which, go to the com and click through the Amazon link. Do you, do you guys have a plug? <laughs> What's your website? Like, Do you have a website or just go to iTunes? Uh, just iTunes or uh, Twitter slash Secret Lover Pod. Secret Lover. Lever. Secret Lover Pod. All right. Yeah. I... I think that's uh, I think we're pretty. I think think that's the end there. I think we are about out of time. I think we're about out of time. I'm so glad you guys came on. I'm really looking forward to this contest. Me have you, too. Have you guys gone to Wilmington? Have you done the whole, the whole trek? I have never actually. Have you? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> there's there's a bunch of pictures. We'll have to show you. There's all kinds of pictures I of stu- like Dawson's house. On the, yeah, I stood on the Pacey anchor. <laughs> yeah, the anchor. Um, <laughs> I drove. I drove to Dawson's house. I went to the Airly Gardens, which is you know where they, where, uh, where Pacey loses his virginity, <laughs> and they're also hanging out there later. I think in one of the seasons. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's oh man, it's beautiful. It's it's really cool. Nice. I ate. I ate dinner at Leary's Fresh Fish. <laughs> yeah. How was it? It was pretty good. It is a Latin fusion restaurant. <laughs> yeah. It was really good. Called Mixto. It's all on the water. Like, you cannot be there without being in Dawson's Creek. It's all... It's. I think they call it the River Walk. It's just that, that wooden You just rename walkway. it Dawson's Creek. Yeah. They, they need to. They need to. All right. Well, thank you very much for being on our show. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> we will see you next week, and I will kick your ass. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good luck with that. All right. <laughs> Secret Lover Podcast.
Oh man, we played the song a little prematurely. Oh, I thought I thought I thought I, I was reading you. I thought it was time for the song. I kind of was. I kind of <laughs> was giving that at you, but I was also kind of giving it them. You know, like you're not, you're on the phone and right. Say, All right, well, it's time to go. Yeah, <laughs> I like those girls, man. There's going to be a serious challenge. Yeah, this is going to be good, man. I'm I was, excited. I was sweating, man. If you oh there we go. <laughs> if, you, if you gave me that mic one, the dad's name, even though she she told me the question. Right. And I thought about it, but then I realized she never gave me the answer, and I never looked it up. But I probably would have gotten that one wrong. That's what she said too. She said they just, you know, you just think of him as dad. They must not say his name very much. No, but as soon as you said Mike, she jumped on it. Yeah. So I want to thank the Secret Lover Podcast. I want to thank Indie In Tune with my man Darren Snyder, who I will never say fuck you to. <laughs> and uh, I want to thank Sassy Sarah for showing up and being so eloquently silverly tongued. I want to thank John Rapp for being here running the show. I want to thank uh, the 405 Media, who I will never say fuck you to. <laughs> and I do want to thank Indiana Talks for playing our show yeah. when, when they did. Uh, I do want to say, Nick, fuck you, you're a fucking idiot. Um, but beyond that, I'm feeling pretty good. It's a good show. End of the day. End of the day, time to go to bed and sleep perfectly fine. Did I forget anybody, John? I think that's it, man. About wrapped her up. Oh, shit. I want to thank Rich Barker from the Melody Inn, where every Saturday night is punk rock night in Indianapolis. I'm not going to read them. I think think that's enough. Go to uh, punkrocknight.com for all your punk rock night needs. Punkrocknight.com. they got some killer shows coming up. I'm going to wing it. I'm going to wing it right now (laughs) before we go. I'm going to tell you that they do have... <laughs> I think they got the the Monty Python, or they got the oh, burlesque yeah. strip a lot. The Monty Python burlesque, yeah, like the spam a lot, the strip a lot. There's gonna be some good shit going on. Go go check it out. Go check it out. And we'll be there one of these days, mingling with you. ChrisBreakShow.com, PunkRockNight.com. <laughs>